Hey boys and girls, the name of our book is How Our Rain, Snow, and Hail Alike. The author's name is Ellen Lawrence. This book was published by Bearport Publishing in New York, and the copyright date is 2018. As you listen to this book, you're going to be thinking about how three different kinds of weather are different and how they are alike. When you're finished reading with me, you're going to go to Seesaw and there's a note-taking guide. You are going to give me two facts about rain, two facts about snow, and two facts about hail in your note-taking chart. So as we read, be thinking, hmm, that might make a good fact for my notes. If you need to stop the book and write down your fact, you can do that and then come back. Let's get started. Different in many ways. When heavy rain falls from the sky, it quickly makes people wet. When soft snow falls, it gently settles on skin and clothes. When icy hail falls, it can hurt anyone it hits. Raindrops, snowflakes, and hailstones are different from each other in many ways. Are there also ways they are alike? Hmm, well, by the time we finish reading this book, we should know the answer to that. Let's start here. Look in this girl's hand. That kind of looks like what Miss Olson calls sonic ice. It says hailstones are small balls of ice that fall from clouds. Usually they are no bigger than a pea. In 2010, however, a giant hailstone measuring about eight inches across fell in the state of South Dakota. Wow, that's a big hailstone. It all begins with water. One way in which rain, snow, and hail are alike is that they all fall from the sky. How does this happen? It all begins with the water in the oceans, rivers, lakes, and ponds. As the sun warms the water, some of it changes. It turns from a liquid into a gas called water vapor. The vapor floats up into the air. It's not possible to see water vapor, yet it is in the air all around us. Every second of every day, some of the Earth's water is changing into vapor. And this tells about an experiment you can try. Pour some water onto the sidewalk on a warm, sunny day. Watch what happens to the water. It looks like it's disappearing, but it isn't. The water is changing into invisible water vapor. Making clouds. The water vapor soon rises high above the earth where the air is cold. <laughs> the cold air changes the vapor to turn into tiny water droplets that stick to bits of dust floating in the air. These droplets join with billions of others to form clouds. Yeah, here's another experiment to try. Take a soda can from the refrigerator. After a few minutes, you will see drops of water on the outside of the can. How did this happen? The water vapor in the air touched the cold can and changed it back into liquid water. Water can change from a liquid into a gas and then back to a liquid again. How cool. Making rain. Inside a cloud, the tiny water droplets join together to make bigger drops. Soon, the drops get even bigger and heavier. Then, they fall back to earth as raindrops. The raindrops are water that has moved from earth into the sky and back to earth again. This movement of water is called the water cycle. So let's start at one. One, the sun warms up the water. Two, water vapor rises into the air. Three, 
the water droplets form clouds, and then four, drip, drop, drip, drop, rain falls to the earth. Rain falls into oceans, lakes, rivers, and ponds. It might even make a puddle on the land. Soon, the rainwater may begin to turn into vapor and go through the water cycle again. Rain forms inside clouds and then falls to the earth. Snow falls from the sky too. Hmm, wonder how snow forms. Let it snow. Sometimes the air around a cloud is very cold. Then the water droplets freeze into tiny ice crystals instead of becoming raindrops. The crystals are about the size of the period right there at the end of this sentence. They stick together to form snowflakes. The cloud or the snow falls from the cloud instead of rain falling from the cloud. Every snowflake that forms has six sides. No two snowflakes look the same. Each one has its own special pattern. Snow stays on the ground when the air is cold, but when the air warms up, what do you think happens to it? Yep, it's going to melt and be part of the water cycle again, isn't it? A disappearing snowman! Snow on the ground means it's time to build a snowman. When the weather stays very cold, a snowman may last for weeks. When the air warms up, however, the snowman begins to melt. The warmth of the sun soon changes the snowman back into water. You guessed it. Water can change from a liquid to solid ice and back to a liquid again. Water, ice, liquid, water, ice, liquid, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, how do hailstones form? Well, that's what the girl was holding at the beginning of the book. Remember all those little pebbles that Miss Olson said look like sonic eyes? Hailstones form inside a thunder cloud, a thunderstorm cloud, when the wind blows the clouds tiny water droplets way up high. There, the air is super cold and the droplets freeze into balls of ice. These frozen ice balls, called hailstones, fall back lower in the cloud, and then more water droplets get stuck to them, and then the hailstones get blown up high into the cloud again where it's super, super cold, and new droplets freeze on. Can you see the layers here? Many layers of ice. If you cut open, a hailstone, you can see all the different layers of ice from it falling down here and water droplets stick to it. And then it gets tossed back up again. <gasps> down it goes. More water droplets stick to it. Up it goes. Down again. Round and round. It's hailing! Soon the hailstones are too heavy to stay floating in the cloud. They fall to earth as hail. It takes about 10 billion tiny water droplets to make one big hailstone that's the size of a golf ball. To become as large as a golf ball, a hailstone has to spend as much as 10 minutes going up and down around inside of a thunderstorm cloud. Look at the icy hailstones in this picture. What do you think will happen to them when they get warm? Yep, they're going to melt and be part of the water cycle again. Now, just so you know, I'm not saying a bad word. This is hail, H-A-I-L, not like the bad word. Hailstone, it's a kind of weather. Different but alike. Raindrops, snowflakes, and hailstones may look very different from each other, yet there are many ways in which they are alike. They all develop high in the sky, inside clouds. Then they all fall to the earth. And most important of all, they are all made of water. 
The different forms that water takes when it falls from a cloud are called precipitation. Rain and snow and hail are all types of precipitation. Hailstones are precipitation and snowflakes are too and so are raindrops. At the very end of this book, there's a science lab that you can do if you want to. It says rain, snow, and hail notebook. In a notebook, keep track of the precipitation that falls where you live. Use the chart at right as a guide to measure your, or to record your measurements. So it says get a piece of notebook paper. It says precipitation record. And then you're going to make a column of the date and then you're going to draw a picture of the kind of precipitation there was and then a measurement. So, hmm, how are we going to get this measurement? It says how to measure. Well, for rain, it says leave a clear glass jar outside. Whenever it rains, use a ruler to measure how much water fell in the jar. So if there's this much water, you look at the ruler and you go, okay, it's at one inch. So you would write one inch right there. For snow, it says use a ruler to measure the snow's depth in a place where the ground is flat. Some of you may have done that the last few weeks when it was so snowy to see how much was in your yard. And then for hail, you're going to use your ruler to measure the width. So from side to side, the width of one hailstone to see how large it is. Awesome, huh? Also in this book, there are some science words. There's a glossary that explains some of the words in the book, like gas. We talked about the water vapor. That's a gas. It explains what the hailstones are. It explains that a liquid is something that flows and changes its shape to fit whatever container it's placed in. It tells what a solid is. A solid is something that has a definite size and shape. Like when water becomes ice, it has a shape. Then it's talking about our water cycle, and it explains that water vapor is liquid water that has changed into a gas. Pretty cool, isn't it? I love science. All right, guys, that is all of that book. Go to your seesaw and give me two facts about raindrops, two facts about snowflakes, and two facts about hailstones. I can't wait to look at your notes. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.